whatever. Hey, 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 this is Matthew Harvey here with the 12 O'Clock Siren recording live at the 903 Broadband Studios on the Cowboy Corner on the southeast side of the downtown Leonard Square. On my left hand is James. Let's get a fourth opinion, Hartley. <laughs> well, I will be from now on. Me too. You know? I mean, dang, dude. That was four, crazy. Four opinions, please. Four opinions before I even consider neck they've, surgery. They've all got a match. Back surgery, yes. anything, no. the vaccine. Yeah. Oh man, would it be like wrong if prior to going under, I was like, "Hey, can you like leave a sponge in? I need, I need some bills paid." That blows my mind. It does. I, hey, I get mistakes happen. Like even neurosurgeons or or whatever, like mistakes happen. But my goodness, got to get past past nurses. I would assume. Yeah, and everybody. There's, yeah. there's a lot of checks and balances there. Jeez. OR techs, you know. Like, hey, yeah. why don't you grab that sponge out of there? At yeah. least. And I have this like vision in my head that it's like a like a, a sponge from like that I use to wash my dishes. Is it blue? <laughs> I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know why. Like did an SOS say, pad. Did she say it was blue? She did. She said yeah, she yeah. had some. I had blue in my mind. Yeah. But I was thinking terry cloth. Like you might get from an auto store or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That was crazy. Uh, you know, I pre- in some ways I want to say I appreciate you turning me on to the uh, to the series because I just started it, but uh, it's also horrible and hard. Yeah, I had a hard time getting through it, and probably didn't watch some of it. Yeah, you know, by choice. Oh because yeah, I was like, Ugh, I can't do this. The decapitation uh, uh, victim was the most shocking, bro. And just because you go in for like a nagging pain, yeah. From a auto in, uh, injury, I believe. Yeah, it was a car He's wreck. Like, yeah, I'm like, I had a car wreck, and you know, just my shoulder hurt. My neck hurt. Bam, you're decapitated. And then he, your buddy decapitates you. Yeah. Technically, in a technical sense. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it was man, it's nuts. Insanity. But thank you very much for um, Pam and Larry Trusty for coming in and talking to us. Once again, you can find them on Peacock Channel. Uh, Dr. Death, the undoctored story, yep. I believe. And then the Dr. Death podcast. Podcast. Who's that by? She said the name. Oh, uh, you know what? I had I'm it pulled up. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Yeah, well, we, um, we saw how that went with the with the Christopher Walken. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, I failed got, there. What you got to do is uh, g- grab, grab a, a free-range chicken. Th- I don't care how you get one, buy one, or hunt one down with a knife. Just treat the animal with respect. And then go out for coffee. That was it. That's pretty good. Good job. But see, I've been thinking about it for an hour and a half now. Oh, have you? Yeah. It's, it's the, been bothering you. Yeah, well, it, it's the being put on the spot. I can also make myself sneeze. Yeah. But if somebody's like, hey, make yourself sneeze, I, I can't do mm-hmm. it. It's weird. You have to do it. Yeah, I have to do it. So, anyway. And then uh, Dr. Death mini series. I don't know if it's on Peacock as well. It is. I believe it is. I saw it on there. Okay. And that's like uh, Alec Baldwin and Friends, as I believe I mentioned. Yeah, um, so Dr. Death, uh, I don't know, sorry, I don't know, uh, let's forgo it, I'll have to look at that later. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, Dr. Death podcast, find it on any other yeah. podcast. His thing. name was Dr. Christopher Bun- uh, Dunch. Dunch. Dunch, so find that, D-U-N-S-C-H, D-U-E-N- I think. D-U-E-N- Yeah, whatever. S-T-C-H, something like that. So he's, is he rotting in some jail in Texas? He got, he got life. Yeah. Um, and he is serving it out, I believe. Yeah. So, I mean. I'd probably go ahead and just hang myself if I got yeah, life in prison that for that. L- when I was finding out the, the verdict on that, I was like, oh, you can't possibly find this guy innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Mm. Glad she's okay. Yes. she uh, She's a trooper, too. Like, yep. uh, you know, obviously she probably deals with a little bit of PTSD. We didn't get into that yeah. too much. She said she has her days. Uh, but she she You can see she's up. getting emotional just yep. talking about it, you know, like. I mean, you can tell it's. Uh, can you imagine her husband? How he probably huge. just wants to put his like, oh yeah, hands around that dude's oh, neck. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah, I'd, I'd or have let a, me operate. I'd have a hard time not <laughs> going to the trial. Oh yeah, you know, and being present, and Absolutely. I, I got to see, look in your eyes, and you got to look at me. Yep, man. Um, man, first podcast in six, eight weeks, ten. It's been weeks. a while. I was just looking. Our last one was with Matt Boggs of Prophets and Outlaws, who he, tore it up at the uh, picnic. I heard, dude. This is our first recap since then, isn't it? We didn't even do a recap for that, huh? Probably no. the first one we missed. No, we, we did like the car show episode. We did the, yeah. um, what was the second one? We did, uh, the, we did Prophets and Outlaws, of course. Oh, then we had Cheryl. Yeah, we had and Cheryl Blaine and Blaine on, on yep. just to go over the whole thing. And yep. because of those podcasts, it was the biggest Leonard picnic ever. That's awesome. I mean, I'm just going to take uh, no, credit I, for that. Absolutely. You know, you that's should. why. Our massive reach. Our, yeah, our, our 78 <laughs> downloads <laughs> reflect that 2,400 yeah. people approximately yeah. showed up to the Leonard picnic over yeah. the weekend. That's so, right. Thank you, 78 people, for getting the word out there. And, and, and you're doing the Lord's and, work. <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but man, that, uh, the picnic was awesome. You were out of town, weren't you? I was. You with the, the fam at the river. I was at the river. And I'll be honest, I'm sad I missed a picnic, but the river's always a good choice. I bet you had fun. I did have a, a really good time. Stay cool. So here's what's weird. Uh, we were on the Guadalupe. Okay. Uh, what's weird is I don't. Like, it was not as cold as I remember. Mm. Either my tolerance has gone up or, I don't know, maybe global warming's help. I don't know. Whatever. But uh, it was, I mean, it was cold. Yeah. Guadalupe's cold. But, like, it was doable, you know? Because it was hot. Yeah, but it was it was good. It was just a good all-around vibe. Like, I didn't, after we got out of the river, we still hung out outside of the uh, RV. Yeah. Like, it was fine. Cool. You know? It was a good time. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, we were partying. Yeah, well, I up know. Here. And you were all like you know. working hard, too. Man, I worked a lot yeah. that day. One yeah. day. That's awesome. Uh, but before that, we went to Zane Lamprey. We did go to Zane Lamprey. We man. haven't that talked was, about that. That was phenomenal. Haven't. Okay, folks, listen. Zane Lamprey was the uh, host of a show called Three Sheets is when I came to know him. Mm-hmm. I think he had had one before, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but it was anyway. I came to know him through three sheets, and I think that was that, about that, the. That's uh, what shot him into stardom. Yeah, uh, or at least in D, our consciousness. D level stardom. Yeah, as he talked about. He did, didn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah. he was like, I'm definitely like a D lister. Yeah. Like some people know me. Um, that was Paloma Creek era, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so like we had our house in Paloma Creek in Little Elm, and we would watch, uh, thirty minute episodes of this yeah. guy that went around the world and just drank. Like, you know, the local drink. Yeah. He was like the, the local food. He was like the Anthony Bourdain of booze. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, it was a great show. So we went and watched him do some stand up and talk about his experiences. And it was a fantastic time at Tups. I think I still owe you for tickets. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was at Tups Brewery in McKinney. And, uh, man, we got to meet him. Yeah. He talked with us. Not, yeah. not like, hey, you know, signed my shirt and we moved on. He like talked with us for a mm-hmm. little bit. It was cool. I enjoyed it. We we're hoping to get an interview with him. Yeah. And remember, I uh, I wanted to ask him if I had asked him two weeks ago if he'd yeah. do an interview with us yeah. that day, would he actually said yes? But I didn't even have the guts to do that. But the funny thing was, is being as with it as he is, he probably just said, oh, yeah, if you'd asked me two weeks ago. I think he yeah. totally would have done it. He Regardless was very approachable and was. fun and outgoing. Drank uh, a lot, and, too, and he did. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was a good time. Yeah, at he, the Tups Brewery, he was. Uh, what was he was like? Hey, y'all remember that Thursday y'all had to wear masks? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny getting an outside perspective, uh, and he kind of you know poked fun at it. But he had a lot of dates here in Texas. <laughs> yeah, <he laughs> you did. know, and yep. he liked uh, he liked the Texas vibe. He's on so. a huge tour, the Laughs and Drafts tour. I know. If we ever get famous for this podcast and have money, yep. I'd like to to do a, a you know a season plus one of three sheets with Zane Lamprey. Let's go yeah. somewhere and do something with him. Yeah. What if we get famous, but it's not for the podcast? I'd still, like then, you... still rock it. I mean, fam- I'll just leverage my fame any way I can, really. Okay. You know? Yep. If, like, I got famous for, I don't know, creating some app or something, I would still use that fame to, to go do something with him. Yeah. So, what Down about with you? that? Did you do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Any fame goes to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, you know what? It was episode five that did it, or whatever. <laughs> Made this me famous. Survived to jump off a bridge. I mean, it's all because of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care what fame it is. Um, off topic there. 
Oh, that was that's right what, before the uh, the picnic, though. It was. It was. Matter of fact, we didn't go to the picnic that night because we went to that because it was the first night of the picnic. It's true. We I did uh, uh, karaoke that night. I think it was the event of the evening. Yeah, I showed up a little bit uh, late to Zane Lamprey because I had a really important customer meeting. So I think I was in like a sport coat yep. and uh, like you know full like professional regalia, if you will. Yep, I was, was awaiting a, you in sweat. Yeah, and it was 110 yeah, degrees outside. I was awaiting in sweat with a beer. Yeah, it was um, awesome. And some rise, uh, rise little trailer food on Man, the way. So we, I remember I ordered a ton of food. Yeah, it was great. And I had uh, lobster rolls. It was good timing. Yep. Front was, row. Front row VIP tickets. Yeah. Fantastic. Good, good times. Uh, Zane Lamprey. I hear Slipknot's coming back. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. We should go to I'm, that show. I'm down with that. At almost 40. I think the Leonard Picnic's going to have him next year. <sighs> Slipknot in the city park. Can you s- imagine that? My that'd goodness. Be, that'd be funny. My goodness. Um, But I did the uh, ice cream contest. Oh, how was that? There. It was delicious. Yeah. Do you have a personal favorite? Um, I'm, I'm a uh, uh, peanut butter guy, so okay. I, mine was a peanut butter. Cool. Yeah. It was really good. There's a banana pudding that was really good. There was a uh, there's a bunch. It's about twenty different flavors. We make uh, my family makes homemade ice cream a couple times a year. We do something called straw banut, strawberries, bananas, and pecans. Cool, and it's amazing. That sounds really good. Yeah, it's really good. You should enter next year. We might not go to the river. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. The river calls, man. But dude, I don't know if you know. But I hosted my first car show. Yeah, I heard there was like a f- like one thousand nine hundred and twenty two cars or something. Yeah, there was a lot of cars. Yeah, it wasn't that many. Sure, but felt we like estimated it, about a hundred and seventy. Wow, vehicles. That's amazing, dude. I was really shocked. Yeah, that's good. The day before, I had twenty registered. So I was expecting twenty people to show You're up. You're like, all right, we'll get twenty or thirty out of this. One hundred and seventy. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. I bet it only gets bigger too. I hope so. You yeah. know, hopefully next year it gets bigger. And people uh, were asking how many years we had been doing it. And you're like, so I was like, eh, this is the first time, and I don't know if it's good or bad. But hopefully you come back next year. You know. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that showed up. We raised fifteen hundred bucks for the Fanning County Children's Center. That's awesome. And through uh, five dollar uh, entrance fees for the actual uh, show, and then per vehicle. And then we did raffles, so a lot of that was raffle money. That is awesome. Uh, but we gave away a thousand bucks and gave away uh, seven different car uh, prizes, door prizes, if Pri- you will. Yeah, yeah, a lot of raffles. It was cool. Um, and then, like all day long, the there were people there. It was a good start to the day. Everybody was already showing up. Carnival was there. Food trucks were there. There's a uh, arts and crafts going on. Parade happened that morning. The parade. I, I wouldn't even add the parade. I was at the uh, city park That's getting awesome. everything ready, and uh, the parade apparently was off the charts. Yeah, I would have liked to seen the parade, man, for sure. Uh, you know, y'all at the the yeah on the the board, I guess is that what yeah. I call it. Um, you know, you and Sharon Blaine, everybody else, at, y'all did an awesome job. Y'all put a lot of work into it, and it paid off. Yep. So. There's a lot of people up there working a lot of hours to get it done. They did terrific. And Everybody else showed up for it, you which know, is the any, big anything thing. around here. You gotta, it doesn't happen unless people show up, right. you know, and it's not gonna happen again, yeah, if, unless people showed up. And I think you got a good taste of what people want, yeah, you know, and they showed up for it. And I think everybody had a good time. Sure, I saw a ton of positive comments about it. That's awesome. The lineup was great. The food was good. All the like, all the vendors were saying is some of the one of the best, you know. Events they've been to. That's awesome. Uh, business wise and all that. But yeah, no, no uh, big hiccups. Well, thank God. Yeah, knock on wood. With uh, beer and wine on tap, you know, yeah. available for drinks. So. Did any meltdowns? Any uh, any people on their uh, soapbox no. screaming like no? You know, I thumping the Bible out there. I and, didn't see any yeah. of that. It was no incidents. That's good. You know, well, good, good overall. I was at event. the river, so. Yeah, well, yeah. you were you were making incidents down yeah, there. Yeah, I had to I had to leave out. I didn't want to make a fool of myself in my hometown. Yeah. So what's uh, cool. what do you got coming up? I just got back from two weeks in Colorado. Yeah, you've been gone for a while. I was. It was uh, fantastic, man. I love Colorado. 
So you, I, I didn't realize you were you going up there to acclimate? So yeah, so it was kind of a double whammy trip. Um, Ashley and I and the family, we go every year to Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Um, and so we spend a week there for vacation and I had signed up for this trail race, um, that was at altitude. So I said, you know what, let's go up a week before the trail race. We'll try to acclimate whatever, run the trail race. And then we'll go to Pagosa the week after for vacation, whatever. So that's what we did. Cool. Yeah. Failed miserably. Yeah. Tell race. us about it. Uh, it was, I'm a flatlander man and a week wasn't enough. I, I was, uh, I spent a week in Walden, mm. uh, which is, uh, the only incorporated, um, town in the county. I can't remember what county it is, but it's, uh, it's on what they call the North park. So it's basically North central Colorado, right? Uh, the closest town is like Laramie, Wyoming. Okay. And, uh, it gets called, they call it n- the like never summer mountains up there because, uh, their, their, ro- their rodeo is um at the end of june every year and in 2020 they had 10 inches of snow the day their rodeo Sheep. came so it's That's chilly well what's crazy though of course the one year i do it they're under a heat wave and it was like 85 degrees there oh. like and it was so funny man because i found a bar across from the hotel and i was hanging out talking to the bartender she was this older lady and she's like it is miserable up here right now and i was like this is brisk yeah, this is great. you know this it was because it was 80 degrees but it was like no humidity and we were in this dark bar and they had the uh they had the doors open on either side so there was like a breeze coming through man it was glorious nice. for me and they were all sweating and <laughs> you know i was like i think it's great but yeah man i stayed up there it was at like 8500 feet and we started the race starts at 8500 feet and quickly goes up to 115 mm-hmm. and I just can't breathe at yeah. altitude, man. Well, it's tough. It is tough breathing yeah. up that high. Even, uh, I mean, we go snowboard snowboarding and it's uh, 12,000 yeah. or so. Yeah. And even, you know, just to bend down and, and get your bindings on, just bending like, over <gasps> and, and curling, you know, putting up, pushing all your organs up in yeah. your chest to, yeah. to adjust your bindings is a task. It is, man. And it knocks the wind out. I can imagine. Well, you know, I signed up for 100K. And I signed up with a buddy of mine that I served with, uh, who retired. He was, he's kind of my military mentor and, uh, he lives in Montana. And, uh, so he's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of edge there, but he's not like super high in Montana or anything, but, uh, he's, he's been running mountains for a few years. Yeah. So we get to this race and neither one of us really expect to finish. We're just going to give it a good faith effort, you know? And, uh, so we start off the first couple of miles are runnable. And, uh, then it goes up to, like I said, eleven five, and then it goes up to 12 eventually. And it took me like the first climb was from 8,500 to eleven five, And it took me almost three hours over five miles. And it was just so brutal, man. Cause my heart rate would spike. I couldn't breathe. Uh, anytime it was flat or we were going down, no problem, yeah. but the climbing and you know, you got to pack on. So you got like water. I had about 45 ounces of water on me and plus a raincoat and gloves and a beanie and a whistle and all the stuff they made you take mm. for safety purposes. So you've got probably a 10 pound pack. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but you know, climbing up the mountains, you're walking with sticks too. Yeah. I had, had trekking poles yeah. and, um, anyway, you, said you, you told me you weren't going to bring them. Yeah. I, I kind of like, just on a whim said you know what I want to do this and I'm so happy I did because I don't think I'd have made it anywhere but uh I ended up making it 20 miles uh, and I missed my cutoff on the second cutoff I I didn't make that and they were like hey we got to pull you from the course and I was like I'm so happy you said that (laughs) you know like I'm ready yeah I'm I'm ready to be done uh but my buddy John ended up uh he ended up doing it he completed he he completed 64 miles uh he finished at about 3 30 in the morning um, I just missed because I got I, I got pulled off the course at like one o'clock, right? So I went back. Ashley came and picked me up. We had like dinner. We hung out. Yeah. I took a nap. We had dinner. I uh, came back to the hotel. And I he, fell asleep. He, he's going. He's still going okay. during all this, all right. you know. And so I was like, I looked at the at the race report. Uh, you could go and check, and he was still crushing it. Wow. And I was like, John's still in it. So I set my alarm for like three in the morning, and it was like a thirty minute drive to the to the start line. And so I set my alarm for three in the morning, got up, drove down there, got there about three forty, and he had just finished. Wow. And so I found him in the community center there in Gould. And uh he, he looked at me and he said, That's the hardest <laughs> thing I've ever done. And he cussed at me for 
picking the race because I was the one that chose this race. And he was like, I'm never doing that again. That was yeah, terrible. Man. And he's like a six or eight or ten time hundred mile finisher. Mm. And this was 40 miles less. And he was like, it was awful. Wow. Yeah. So that's my story. Jeez. Yeah. Then we went to Pagosa and I hung out for a week and didn't do much. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Redeem yourself. Yeah. We, we, uh, we spent time in the river. We went hiking. It was great. Cool. I love color. It's nice. Yeah, sorry. I'm jealous. Yeah, I uh, we made an offer on some property, went under contract, but it fell through. So, oh, poo. Yeah, so we're gonna have to back to the drawing board on that. Oh, yeah. Are you gonna have your Colorado retreat? Not yet, not yet. So I came back and picked up a boat. Oh, there yeah. you go. And it's a project. The boat game. It was man. This might have been aggressive. Yeah. The sheer amount of rat poop. <laughs> I yes. saw the I saw the rat poop. You saw it. That was a lot of rat poop, but I found you twenty bucks. You did? Uh, no, you didn't. You found me thirty five. Thirty five bucks. Thirty five dollars yeah. and underneath a rat, bag. rat poop. Yeah, I used it to wash the boat. Did you use it all? Yeah, uh, just about. I think there's eight dollars left. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. That found, was found a little Ziploc bag with thirty five dollar bills under the console. It's yeah. weird. I uh, just in case money, I guess. I guess. Um, I tell you what, though, it was very satisfying to take that boat to the car wash and spray it down because all that mildew you could see it coming off. It was, it was like cathartic. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I bet it felt good. It did. It did. It's still dirty, though. Did you write your name in the side of the pontoon in the mildew? I have not. With, with the I uh, made, I made sprayer. clean lines. Clean okay. lines. It uh, looks good. Yeah, I saw I the pictures before. I saw it before, and then I saw the pictures after. It looks nice. I think it's probably good enough to take out once before the season's over. Now, at this point, we should go do yeah. it. I'd like to. You're a boat guy. You've you've done the boat life, so I'd kind of like to take you up there yeah. and have you show me the yeah, let's, the thing. Let's go play with it. Yeah, play with your dinghy. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> so anyway, enough about boats and failed trail races, dude. We we were at the uh, the Leonard picnic very next day. Mm-hmm. We drove to Panama City Beach. Oh, that's right. Very next day. That's like, a brutal woke drive, up dude. at 6 a.m. or something and drove, you know, yeah. whatever it was, and drove all the way to Panama City Beach for a week. But it was that's nice. good. It yeah. was a good, nice week off after a lot of hard work. It was kind of a nice little payoff. Dude, speaking of, that's your parents' place down there, right? Yep. Speaking of, your dad just retired. He did. So now both of your parents are retired. Both retired. That's awesome. Um, he, uh, yeah, he flew in from Kona. Hawaii um, last week. That's awesome, man. And finished off a 35-year career. At the same Pretty company. Cool. At the same company. That's yeah. nuts. That doesn't happen very often now. No. No. And and we were talking, like, to be his age and to keep your health, to keep your yeah. eyesight, to keep your sanity, yeah. to not get hit in the head. We, your flight we were, physical, man. We were talking with a, a pilot buddy of his that had got hit in the head. And, yeah. you know, another uh, uh, somebody he knew maybe, uh, had got hit in the head and had to quit flying. Yeah. Because of, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, concussion. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine was an air I, traffic controller in the Navy. Yep. And uh, he slipped and fell, hit his head, went unconscious, and they pulled his flight physical, and he could no longer be on. I never flight. really considered how delicate your health is, and yeah. just something as small as slipping or hitting your head, yeah. something like that can take out your career. Absolutely. But uh, that's that goes to uh, show you how much commitment and dedication it takes to completing. You know, it does. Five well, years of he maxed out to like sixty five. You got to quit. So yeah. His birthday was Saturday. He was nice. done, done Monday. Man, pretty cool though. That is cool. Right up to the end, he did as much as you could do. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'd like to have him on for a spe- uh, special series. Yeah. Of uh, siren f- content. If you will, yeah, sure. A documentary of a pilot, yeah, basically, be great. Yeah, he's got some stories, and I think y'all would enjoy it. I know I would. No, I and think really, I think that'd be a lot of fun to talk about. That's all I do this for, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. No, it'd be it'd be a good time. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll get into that. Uh, mm. Yeah, we did their. Uh, they they got a beach house down there in Panama. We stay there for a week. Did the vacation down there. Y'all got to go down there and hang out with us. I, I want to. One year. Desperately. Yeah. Um, We did New Orleans, too. I've been on the, uh, like, the go, absolute go, this past couple months. Well. And, I, and you've been out of pocket as well. You're kind of known for being on the go, though. But this summer has been, every weekend has been something. 
we we did New Orleans for our friend's 40th birthday. We I mean, it was just like if it wasn't a show, it's a random weekend here or there. It just it's been unusually packed. Busy. Yeah. I looked at my weekends. I was like, I can't. Nope, can't do that. I'll have a weekend. You know, a few uh, a couple of months ago, we got the uh, we got the RV, and yeah. that that's kind of how I Took felt weekends, because yeah. take well, every weekend we're going doing something, yeah. you know, and it's great, but it's also kind of like, oh, man, I just right. kind of want a yeah. weekend to hang out, you know. Yeah, then you miss those weekends where you you're like, God, I wish I had an RV. Well, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? But the thing is, is like, uh, you know, vacation, no matter where you go, is not super restful. Yeah, you know, like you get a week at the beach, maybe that's good. But like a weekend trip in an RV or whatever, you don't come back like recharged necessarily because right. you you know you've been out doing things. And the worst part about that is Sunday is work day. Yeah, basically. Yeah, because you're you know, you're it's you're, work or drive. That's or it. Both. Yeah, you're breaking and, it down and it's when you and, don't want to. I know, and you get home and you're like, dang, it's four o'clock in the yeah. afternoon, and I got to be at work tomorrow morning. Yeah. You know? So anyway, there are give. I mean, you do two weeks at a time, boy. That work ain't nothing. That's right. You know? That's right. It's for the greater good. I do love me some vacations, It's though. fun, though. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a little jealous of your New Orleans trip, you know? Uh, I think I think I've talked about my New Orleans experience uh, on this podcast a little bit, but it's the only place I've ever been to jail. Yeah. And uh, But I love the city, man. It's yeah, It's such a too. cool city. And the food and the culture and the vibe, I yeah. guess. That's probably, I probably just should have said the vibe because it's great. We... So. we, we a lot of good food right. and drink and all that stuff and enjoyed the city and left it better than we found it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let me ask you a question then. Yep. It's mid August right now. I say, Matthew, we can go anywhere in the continental United States, the lower 48. Yep. Right. Where do you want to go next weekend? Next weekend. Yeah. Me and you. We're going to go do something. Uh, August. Late August. Yep. Um, that's a good question. Three days. We got three days on the ground. Three days on the ground. Yeah. Where are we going? Um, ooh. Man, that you put me on the spot there. Sorry, it's like you and my Christopher Walken impression. Yeah, exactly. I'm scared. I, I do have to think about this. I've got to. All right. Because I I do love New Orleans, and that's basically my go-to okay, but for you just a, went. A, a two or three day weekend. You just um, went. Let's go somewhere new. Um, somewhere. Okay. It, let me. My let, wife would kill me if I didn't bring her with me. But no, uh, it's just me and you. Yeah, but but I'm just gonna say for hypotheticals, you and I are gonna go to Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, that's a good one. I like yeah. that. I've never been. Yeah. I've heard I, Charleston's great. I would like to go there. My wife also would love to go there. I think it'd be a cool place to go to. Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, that was my private second. Yeah, or the Bourbon Trail. Generally, yeah. yeah. You know, so. Yeah, that would, it would be those two. Upstate New York would be a good one, you know. Yep, like, haven't uh, done much of that. Ellicottville, where we went for Nick's wedding. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's I've been place. on the Canada side of Buffalo, but I've never been to Buffalo. Well, they say that that's the better side. Oh yeah, honestly. Uh, but I, man, I liked Buffalo. So you know, we have this idea down here in Red Texas that. Uh, New York's this like blue state, you know, it's not New York city's blue. Mm -hmm. Everything else is like mm -hmm. dyed in the wool red. Yeah. And, uh, I met some of the most conservative people I've ever met in my life. Uh, well one in San Francisco, oddly enough, and then two Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I went to a, to a bar there called the pink. I think it was called or pinks. Uh, it was this, it, every time I die is home bar. Okay. That's like, that's why wow. I went uh, cool. and it's like a, grungy little bar in downtown Buffalo, you know, um, cool. Reminiscent of like the sidebar, maybe kind of, yep. kind of, yep. it's like long and narrow. And, uh, man, Ashley and I walked in there, they're known for it. One being grungy and they have really good steak sandwiches. All right. So we split a steak sandwich, started talking to the, the bartender, not, not the wings, not the wings. Yeah. Uh, but we did go have at anchor bar, which is like the home of the cool. wings. We did do that. And, um, anyway, started talking to the bartender and man, he had some, really conservative talking points and some things to say about their, their state and city and stuff. So I bet. Cool. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, just like Pennsylvania. I mean, it's very conservative in the outskirts. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Lord. Well, they even call, uh, like Western Pennsylvania, like Pennsylvania or whatever. Yeah. You know, yep. um, I tell you another place I'd like to go is, uh, Kenny Bunkport, Maine. Yeah. I'd like to do that, that for 
the Bushes place? Yeah, it's a uh, the reside? Blue Blood Elite kind of, yeah. you know, rich. Fun elite. to say, too. It Kenny is. Kenny Bunkport. Yeah. 100%. Go ahead, do it again. Yeah, Kenny Bunkport. <laughs> I like it. Kenny Bunkport. Yeah. What's another good one to say? Uh, Val Harbor. I always liked uh, Tag- Chevy Chase. Tagliaboo. Tagliaboo. Paul Tagliaboo, oh, the old okay. NFL commissioner. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Paul Tagliaboo. No, what's another What's another uh, good place? Oh, place? Yeah. Uh, Cucamonga. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Keokuk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kankakee. Kankakee. Yeah. So Chris Waikiki. Knight says that. Yeah. Uh, Titty Kaka. Yeah, I've got to say it. You <laughs> yeah, know, the an- Animaniacs that. would be bad, mad if I didn't. Love the Animaniacs. Yeah, they were great. I wonder if we can find that streaming it's on, somewhere. Yep. Is it? Uh, it started on Netflix a while back. <sighs> I don't know if it's still on. Yeah, it's it's available. I love. I had their Sega it was Genesis good game. Good stuff. It was fantastic. It was a really good cartoon for the tween. It was and, a little edgy and, too. And an adult, kind of edgy. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Have you ever seen the? Uh, speaking of edgy cartoons, you ever seen the King of the Hill episode where? <laughs> where Bobby uh, becomes a Southern gentleman. No. Oh my goodness, dude. We'll talk offline about that. That's good. All right. Yeah. I so. recall one where he wanted to be a circus clown. Yeah. Well, it's it's weird. It's like this Southern gentleman kind of takes him under his wing a little bit, and he says this like one thing, and it kind of clicks with him, and then he just he becomes this little like He's, seersucker he, suit. Like, you know, oh, I need a window seat. This flower is Wilton, you know. and <laughs> I have a vague memory yeah. of this, actually. Let's give room service a ring-a-ling and have them send up some etouffee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just crazy stuff. Bobby's man. a funny character. He is a funny character. So, anyway. Is, and wasn't that, like, Brittany Murphy? Yes, you're correct. She played Bobby. R.I.P. Right? Yeah. R.I.P. That's right. You're her, right. I forgot about. I forgot yeah. she did play that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he is funny, man. His his character she, was really well written. She couldn't let a man do it. I guess not. You know. Yeah, like that's appropriation of some sort. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> well, unless she thought she was a man, maybe. And then I'm sorry. Then, sorry, yeah, yeah, I apologize. Hey, <laughs> hey, the siren officially apologizes yeah. to Brittany Murphy. Yeah. Don't offend R. anyone. P. Yep. Oh man. Uh. But that brings us to uh, October, or sorry, August 17th? Yeah. Ish. Ish. Um, and we have some exciting guests coming up, one of which is right now kayaking the uh, mighty Mississippi. The, uh, hey, hey, hey now. Um, the old, was it the Old Maiden? What's the, what's the river called? Old, old River? Old River... Old Man River. Yeah. Is that it? The Mississippi. The Mighty Mississippi. Mighty Mississippi. I already said that yeah. one. Uh, Old, Old Man, Man River. River. Sure. Is there any other nickname for it? I don't know. Twain's Muse. <laughs> Look that one up. I don't know if that, but it was it. Mark Twain's Muse. It's been a muse for a lot of people. George R. R. Martin of Game of Thrones, uh, uh, you know, fame. Yeah. Right. He wrote uh, a Game of Thrones and, and a Song of Ice and Fire. He wrote a book several years ago. It's a vampire book called um, Fever Dream. It takes place on a riverboat on the Mississippi in the 19th century. It's awesome. Okay. It's a great book. My buddy is is uh, kayaking the entire Mississippi from the headwaters to the Gulf. And we're going to talk to him after he's finished. Yeah, he's it's going to be Arkansas. fantastic. He's in Arkansas right now. Matter of fact, if you're interested, reach out to us. We can get you in touch with him. You can donate to his cause. He's donating stuff to charity. Yep. Uh, I've donated, and uh, he's very thankful for, for those things. He's kayaking on behalf of... Uh, uh, I just went blank. I'm sorry. I did, too. Um, not, not PTSD, but uh, mental mental health, mental health yeah. is what he's doing. Yep. Uh, kayaking for a cause is the name of the 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 page that he runs, but uh, mental health is the uh, message he's putting out. I want to see him get him more aggressive with it every step. So he's done this now. Like, what's he going to do? Well, like- he's I've, I've watched him for ten years or so. He's oh wow. done He's done a couple of these. He's done uh, the Ohio River. I think he did the whole thing. He did one one of his trips. I think he may have. I think he broke a leg or broke an arm or had he had some sort Jeez. of injury. He had to call it. Um, and had to call it off. But he's done thousands of miles. That's awesome. Of of this. So it's, now not, like, I it's not like a one time thing. Like he's worked up towards this. I want to see him get aggressive yeah. and do like first descents of whitewater rivers in Alberta, Canada. Or yeah, something. well, and, and <laughs> or Joe also, I, I apologize if I'm butchering any of this because um, I haven't followed it 
you know, extremely closely, but I know he does a lot of this stuff and has accomplished a lot too. Yeah. That's He's awesome. gotten a lot of uh publicity al- along the way in, you know, St. Louis and uh Minneapolis, I think. Yeah. Does he go through Minneapolis? Uh that's uh, the headwaters are up there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, papers and T V stations have, have you know interviewed documented him, him and stuff. So that's cool. Uh, he's doing cool stuff. You so we're uh, gonna talk to him. You listening to anything cool right now? Reading anything? Watching anything? What, what's what's on the the TV radio? Mm, not really. Nothing. I've been paying attention to this Afghanistan stuff, <sighs> and that's yeah. another topic. Probably it's for a another, whole nother another episode day. right there, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, but geez. I am listening. Here I'm, we are. I'm going to make a book recommendation. Go for it to people out there if you're listening. Uh, it's called Another Kind of Eden. By James Lee Burke. I'm reading it right now. It's uh, I would say it's one of the great American Gothic novels. Fantastic, right. cool. it's fantastic. Download it on Audible, and listen to it as narrated by Will Patton, and it will, it'll, uh, it'll open your eyes to a whole other author that I didn't know was out there. Um, I mean, it. So I shouldn't say that because I. This I, I discovered James Lee Burke, and this is the latest novel from him, but. He's amazing, and I think for people who haven't heard him, they should listen to him. Other than Do that, yourself a favor and go listen to him. Yeah. Other than that, uh, that's about it. Um, anything else coming up? Uh, Fannin County Fair is coming up. First day of school was today. That. First day of school was today. Oh, which is what I was going to say. I brought this up earlier. Oh. When I was a kid, and you're the only one that liked this post, What's I just our, prayed for global just pandemic. We're friends. I prayed. You know, global pandemic, World War Three, um, just keep me out of school. Hundred year wars, whatever you have to do, please, Lord, yeah. uh, get me out of this school. And, and now it's all coming true for these kids. And we're still going. They've got hundred year wars. They've got global pandemic. They've yeah. got uh, just uh, Rome is burning. Yeah, it's just yeah. burning to the ground. Yeah. Uh, today the power was off yeah. for the first day of school because of a rainstorm in yeah. August. Like a pretty slight rainstorm. Rolling storm. power outages the last three days. Ugh. Yeah, it's been terrible. I just wanted this when I was in elementary. I know. You know, on star testing day or whatever it was back then. Uh, toss test. Toss test. Yeah. Toss test. Toss, then star, then tax? Then or toss, asked, tax, then, then star. asta. Yeah, I then don't remember. Tassa, <laughs> then asta. No, it's all standardized they just, bull they crap. They just mix up Texas Association, standardize. And test. And test. Right. Yeah, it's just some <laughs> mixture of those, whatever. <laughs> they just interchange them. You think there's one person that's like, hey, is it time yet? And they're like, yeah, no. switch oh. it up. Uh, uh, focus groups are saying toss is out and star is in. <laughs> <laughs> Sell toss. <laughs> buy, buy star. Yeah. <laughs> Asta's in now. Yeah. These millennials don't like the star. They don't get it. <laughs> yeah. It's too American. <sighs> oh, that's a story for another topic. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to this. This is... Knock knock. It's been a bit. It's been a minute. Knock knock. Who's there? Nine eleven. Nine eleven. Who? I thought you said you'd never forget. Dang, dude. <laughs> Stop it. Was that too bad? No. No, that's too was, soon. I thought it was a funny, a funny play on a. That's one of the maybe funny nine eleven jokes. It was too soon. It's only twenty years ago. Twenty years, but we are coming up on twenty years. We are. Uh, and man. things in Afghanistan are better than they've man, ever been. It's, it's, well, folks, we'll leave yeah. you with that. All Thanks right. for Sorry tuning in. Um, yeah. Have a good one. Here we go.